Welcome to the short video presentation of VP's evaluation kit around the AEM-10-941. Our AEM-10-941 is designed to harvest photovoltaic energy both outdoors and indoors, even in low light conditions. After this video, you will be able to configure the AEM-10-941 and integrate it into your design to make your device energy autonomous. Our evaluation box includes the evaluation board and instructions. To better understand the configuration process, we advise you to refer to our data sheet. You can download it, as well as other useful resources, on our website's product page, www.eps.com slash product slash AEM 10941. To start your evaluation, you will need two additional components, a harvester and a storage element, and one instrument for measuring the voltages. Here, we will use a voltmeter. For this video, we use a harvester for indoor light and a supercapacitor as a storage element. The harvester which we use for this demo has an MPPT ratio at 80%. From the website manufacturer of this harvester, we can see that the operating voltage is about 0.462 volts and the open circuit at 0.564 volts. The ratio between both voltages gives us the MPPT ratio. The closest and the best to select due to the shape of the power V's voltage curve we will select 75%. To make the video short, we use a small supercapacitor as a storage element, but feel free to use another size of supercapacitor or a rechargeable battery. The protection levels are described in Table 7, page 11, of the AEM-10-941 datasheet. Let's now start by configuring the AEM evaluation board with the jumpers around. The pins cell MPP 1-0 equals 0-1 will define the MPPT ratio at 75%. The pins CFG 2-1-0 equals 0-1-1 will define the maximum voltage, called VOV charge, at 4.5 volts. The internal LDO's converters will be enabled when the voltage on the storage element reaches 3.67 volts. This middle level is called VCHAR ready. The minimum voltage is defined at 2.8 volts, providing 2.5 volts on HV out output. The LV out output is by default 1.8 volts. If using the custom mode, you have resistors footprints available. You will find further support to choose those resistors on our website by downloading the configuration tool. This option could be used to define a higher cold start voltage, which is optional, and we will not use it in this configuration. We won't use this option here, but you could connect a primary battery as a source backup solution. In that case, remove the jumper and define the minimum voltage allowed with the resistors R7 and R8. This jumper enables the balancing feature for dual cells supercapacitor. If not used, connect the jumper to the grand silkscreen option. In this case, the supercapacitor is a dual cells. The jumper should be connected to the TOCN silkscreen option. Selecting the one option means connecting those NHV and LV pins to VBUC. The LDOs will be enabled internally as soon as possible. Now we can look at the VBUC voltage at one of the pins called one and see that the AEM has cold started. The VBUC voltage is already at 2.2 volts. After the cold start, the storage element is being charged by the AEM-10-941. Because the voltage on the storage element has not reached the VCHAR ready level, 
3.67 volts, the LDOs are for now internally disabled and voltages are around zero volts. A 10K resistor has been connected to the HV out LDO output voltage. When the voltage reaches 3.67 volts, the VCHAR ready level, we can now measure 2.5 volts on HV out and 1.8 volts on LV out. Congratulations! You have just completed a crash course on how to configure AEM 10941 and integrate it into your design. Do not hesitate to contact us at www.eps.com contact. We wish you success with making your device energy autonomous. Want to learn more about our solutions and how to integrate them into your designs? Visit our YouTube channel. Thanks for being with us.